Hello everyone. Uh, this is the third video in the series, and uh, by now we have discussed what is thermal radiation, right? Video one. So in that video we discussed the definition of electromagnetic waves. Then came the electromagnetic spectrum. We discussed the properties of electromagnetic waves, and we discussed what thermal radiation is in actual. Okay, so we said that thermal radiation means ultraviolet plus light plus infrared which are emitted because of the temperature of the body okay obviously other waves are also there because of temperature but the amount of energy corresponding to them is very negligible right then in the second video we discussed uh, what is a black body concept and we said that the black body is an ideal body similar to Carnot cycle in thermodynamics. So black body is the body which gives maximum amount of energy, radiation energy for a given temperature. And we found out that value of the total energy by Stephen Boltzmann law. Okay. So in this video, we are going to discuss something known as Planck's law. And this Planck's law gives a term known as monochromatic emissive power. So we will come to that uh, uh, term, its definition by the end of the video. Okay. So you can see that there is a conventional tungsten filament uh, bulb on the board. Okay. So we know that uh, when electric current is passed through this uh, bulb, its filament gets heated up to a temperature of about 2000 Kelvin and because of that temperature it starts emitting significant amount of light right and because of that light we are able to see the objects around in the room right so suppose if Q dot is the total amount of energy emitted by this bulb filament per unit time then using the total emissive power we can find out what is the value of q dot okay so q dot will be equal to black body emissive power into the area of the filament this term is in joule per second per meter square right so this is meter square so the whole term becomes joule per second so we are able to find out the value emitted per unit time and let us suppose this value is 100 joules okay but the point is the point is that because of temperature, any body is going to emit radiation, not only in form of light, but it will also emit very small wavelength radiations like cosmic rays and very long wavelength radiations like radio waves. However, out of 100 joule, almost all of this energy like 99.999999 and so on is going to lie within the thermal radiation band but the remaining part is going to be negligible okay but it is there right so in thermal radiation comes light infrared and ultraviolet so this bulb is not only emitting light but it is also emitting IR and ultraviolet. Obviously, this is also less because then bulb will call sunburn. We will create sunburns, right? Skin burns. So out of this 100 joule, the question comes that what is the amount of light? Because it is because the uh, uh, the purpose of the bulb is to act as a light source, right? So if we know the value of the light, then only we can decide the performance of this bulb. Okay. So this problem of finding out the energy corresponding to a particular wavelength band or a particular wavelength, this problem was solved by a guy, our Avenger, our hero, Max Planck. Okay. So today we are going to discuss that how to find out the energy corresponding to a particular wavelength or corresponding to a particular wavelength range okay so let us suppose uh, let us not suppose in actual it is so let us consider a black body which is at a temperature t kelvin okay so because of that temperature it is going to emit radiation over a wide range of wavelength and that wavelength range is shown here so this red line is denoting the wavelength range so zero corresponds to very small wavelength like 10 raised to power minus 10 micrometers cosmic rays and infinite corresponds to very large wavelengths like 10 raised to power 10 micrometers that is 10,000 kilometers and so on for radio waves okay now on this wavelength band I have marked the wavelength value lambda and around this lambda I have taken a very small wavelength range known as d lambda okay so please note lambda is the wavelength value and around this wavelength lambda there is a wavelength range very small wavelength range d lambda okay now eb of t that is the black body emissive power consists of all the wavelengths right so i can say from zero to infinite the total energy emitted is eb of t right 
So if Eb of t is for the whole wavelength range, then the amount of energy for this very small wavelength range will also be very small. So let us call that energy as DEB. Okay. So what here is written is that in the wavelength range d lambda, the energy emitted is DEB. Okay. Clear? So, D, uh, DEB is the amount of energy emitted in very small wavelength range D lambda around the wavelength lambda and please note this is per unit time per unit area. Okay. So, using unitary method if the energy emitted in D lambda range is DEB then the energy emitted in unit range is DEB by D lambda and this ratio is known as monochromatic emissive power which we are going to denote by Eb comma lambda. Okay. So if we talk of this, if we talk of this, this Deb is nothing but the amount of energy emitted in wavelength range D lambda around lambda and this is in unit time per unit time per unit area. Then we have divided this energy by the unit wavelength range, by the wavelength range, right? So what we get is the energy emitted per unit time per unit area per unit wavelength range around lambda and this term is known as monochromatic emissive power that is the emissive power corresponding to a particular wavelength lambda and Planck he found out the mathematical expression for this he said that this ex this uh, this quantity is equal to c1 which is a constant into lambda raised to power minus 5 divided by e raised to power c2 by lambda t minus 1 both c1 and c2 are constants please note both c1 and c2 are constants and the value of these constants can be written as c1 is equal to 2 pi c0 square h where c0 is the speed of electromagnetic wave in vacuum h is the Planck's constant that is 6.626 into 10 raised to power minus 32 and similarly c2 is equal to h c0 by k here k is the Boltzmann constant which is equal to the characteristic uh, universal gas constant divided by Avogadro's number okay so this monochromatic emissive power is a function of not only the temperature of the black body but it is also a function of the wavelength corresponding to which we want to find out the monochromatic emissive power right now let us see that how this monochromatic emissive power is going to help us so our aim was to find out the energy emitted corresponding to the light wavelength band right the light band so light band means 0.4 micrometer to 0.76 micrometer. So there is a wavelength range lambda 1 to lambda 2, right? So we want to find out the energy emitted in this particular wavelength range. So this is again the wavelength band 0 to infinite for the black body, okay? Corresponding to lambda wavelength, if I take a wavelength range d lambda, the energy emitted will be DEB, right? Right? Now, DEB by D lambda is equal to EB comma lambda, right? So, DEB, we can simply write it as EB comma lambda into D lambda. So, amount of energy emitted per unit time per unit area in this wavelength range is given as this, right? So, if for a smaller wavelength range emitted energy is this, then for a total wavelength range from lambda 1 to lambda 2, we can find out the energy by just integrating this from lambda 1 to lambda 2, right? So, what you will get is, you will get the amount of energy emitted you will get the amount of energy emitted from wavelength range for wavelength range lambda 1 to lambda 2 which is equal to eb comma lambda d lambda integral of lambda 1 to lambda 2 so this term this is the monochromatic emissive power corresponding to lambda and this is the em emissive power corresponding to wavelength range lambda 1 to lambda 2 I hope Planck's law is clear to everyone. Uh, so this Planck's law has lot of important features. It has lot of important characteristics. And those features and characteristics we will discuss in the next video. Thank you.